Hello ladies and gentlemen, that's me Klaus and I welcome you to another episode of my SQL Server Quickies. In the last episode we have talked about allocation units in SQL Server, how SQL Server subdivides tables and indexes into, into allocation units and today I will introduce index allocation map pages to you and how SQL Server uses index allocation map pages to keep track which pages are belonging to a specific allocation unit. As you already know from our last SQL Server Quickie, SQL Server creates for every table and every index at least one partition. And inside that partition we can have up to three allocation units. In row, row overflow and LOB data allocation unit. And for those individual allocation units, SQL Server now creates a so-called IAM page. So we have an IAM page for that allocation unit, an IAM page for that allocation unit, and an IAM page for that allocation unit. As we have already talked in our second SQL Server quickie, about GAM and ASCAM pages, SQL Server allocates pages in so-called mixed and uniform extents. The first eight pages are always allocated in a mixed extent, which means our table grows from 8 kilobyte to 16, 24, up to 64 kilobytes. For that reason, SQL Server stores in that iron bridge the pointer for the first eight pages which are belonging to that specific allocation unit. So we have here pointer for the first page, second page, third page, fourth page, fifth page, sixth page, seventh page and eighth page. After our table or our index in that specific allocation unit has allocated up to eight pages, SQL Server allocates a whole new uniform extent, which means our table or index grows from 64 kilobytes up to 128 and then from 128 to 192 and so on. For that reason, SQL Server keeps track inside that iron page which uniform extents are allocated to that specific allocation unit. So for example, SQL Server tells us or stores uh, pages 200 to 207 are allocated to that allocation unit and for example pages 216 to 223 are allocated to that allocation unit. SQL Server is here again using the same bit pattern that we have already seen in the second quickie about GAM and ASCAM pages, which means one iron page can cover a data interval of 4 gigabytes. Which also means, as soon as our data file gets larger than 4 gigabytes, we need a second set of iron pages. For that reason, the first set of iron pages covers the interval from 1 or from, let's say, 0 gigabytes to 4 gigabytes and finally the second set of iron bridges covers the interval from 4 gigabytes up to 8 gigabytes. And those individual iron bridges which are belonging to the same allocation unit are chained together for a so-called IM chain. Okay. So we have here a so-called IM chain. So we are just chaining those IM pages, those individual IM pages together. So as you can see, a table or an index has a very, very complicated structure inside SQL Server. We have our table or index, clustered non-clustered index. Every table or index has at least one partition and inside that partition we can have up to three individual allocation units in row, row overflow and LOP data and inside those allocation units SQL Server creates at least one iron page. That iron page keeps track of the first eight pages which are allocated in a mixed extent and finally also keeps track which uniform extents 
are allocated to that specific allocation unit and if our data file has more than 4 gigabytes of data, SQL Server creates a so-called ion chain which means for an individual allocation unit we have several distinct ion badges and those ion badges are just chained together. So by now we know how SQL Server creates all that metadata and now we will switch over to SQL Server Management Studio and I will show you how we can analyze those IAM pages. In this simple demonstration I want to show you now how we can analyze those IAM pages within SQL Server Management Studio. So in the first step I'm creating a new database called IAM pages and I'm creating a simple table. As you can see, my table design isn't very intelligent. I'm just creating a table where each record is stored on one data page. I'm inserting one record into that table. We enable trace flag 3604 so that we can out so that we can get output of the various DBCC commands. And with the dpcc int command, SQL Server tells us which pages are belonging to that specific table. As you can see in the output, our table belongs of two pages, one data page, page ID 73, and one iron page, page ID 77. You can also see that the data page points to the iron page in the column iron page ID. So the next step, we are dumping out that iron page. So when we go down, You can see here the first eight slots which are pointing to the eight pages that are stored in mixed extents. As you can see, the first slot, slot 0, is allocated and points to page ID 73, which is our initial data page that SQL Server created when we have inserted that one record. The next step, I'm inserting seven, inserting seven additional records, which means all eight pages are now allocated in mixed extents. So again, when we go down, you can see that a, all eight slots in that iron page are allocated. Those are the same eight pages which DBCC int returns us. Those are the same page IDs. The next step, I'm inserting one additional record which means now SQL Server has to allocate a whole uniform extent and in that case our table also grows from 64 kilobyte to 128 kilobytes. So when we dump out our IAM page again and when we scroll down you can see now pages 0 to 184 are not allocated to that specific allocation unit. Page ID 192 to 199, which isn't shown here, don't ask me why, those are allocated. So SQL Server has allocated that whole extent to that specific allocation unit and pages 200 to 512 are not allocated. So as you can see from this simple demonstration, it's very, very easy to analyze those IAM pages within SQL Server. In this SQL Server Quickie, I have introduced index allocation map pages to you. As you have seen, SQL Server creates index allocation map pages for each individual allocation unit. SQL Server keeps track which eight pages are allocated in mixed extents and finally which uniform extents are allocated for that specific allocation unit. As soon as our data file gets larger than 4 GB, SQL Server creates several other index allocation map pages for us and those individual pages are linked together. So that's the end of that fourth SQL Server Quickie. I'm now saying the same as Felix Baumgartner before his straighter jump. I'm going home now cutting that SQL Server quickie for you, so stay tuned.